out here. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you my story. It all started like this. I just finished feeding the hogs when the power went out. And that happens from time to time out here in the country. I tried calling the electric company, but the lines were dead. Now, I didn't think too much of it at the time. Later that day, I noticed a stranger in my yard. Something wasn't right with him. The way he was just standing there. I went out to see what he wanted. I killed the strangers. It was them or me. The poor devils looked like they fell in a septic tank and festered for a few days. I'd never killed no one before, so I sure was real spooked. I decided to head over to my neighbors across the cornfield. I just didn't feel safe hanging around here all by myself. My neighbors were dead. I didn't know what the heck was going on, and I was scared to death. Reports of violence are coming in from neighboring states. We're unsure at this moment what to make of the situation. The governor is telling everyone to stay in their homes and has issued a... Uh, one moment, folks. Something has just come across my desk. I'm getting reports that the... I'm having trouble reading this bulletin, but I've been told this has been confirmed by official sources. It appears that... The dead are coming back to life and eating the flesh of the living. This is unbelievable news we're hearing. Uh, I, for one, am truly shocked. For those of you tuning in, this is not a joke. Something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. I did what the man on the TV said and stayed on the farm as long as I could. I got by okay, but those corpses kept coming. The shortwave radio said that the military had some safe houses set up in the city. I was running low on supplies and starting to go crazy all by myself. I had nothing to lose. The city looked like a war zone. Roads everywhere were blocked. I didn't know where to go until I noticed a flicking light in the hospital up ahead. Someone was signaling SOS. I wasn't gonna let a few blocked roads stop me from getting to another living person. I'd go on foot. A doctor was on the intercom. He had locked himself in a security room. I had to find him. The doctor had come for supplies a few days ago. The men he was with were murdered by those living dead. Once the killing started, he locked himself in this room. It kept him safe, but now he couldn't get out. The doctor said that if I went to the basement, I could open the door by flicking an electrical switch down there. First, I needed his pass card to get into the basement. He buzzed me into the offices so I could fetch it. It was burning down. I needed to grab the doctor and get out of there. <laughs> Explosions rocked the hospital. No time to think. I just had to save myself. I made it out of the hospital. <laughs> but I still wasn't safe. There was a police station nearby. I figured I could get me some serious firepower there. His name was Otis. He said the police station was a safe house until it got overrun a couple of days ago. But he wouldn't tell me why they locked him up. Criminal or not, I couldn't just leave him there. I had to find a key to his cell. Otis was sure glad to be free. But what would we do now? The radio said there was a safe house in an old theater nearby. We could go there, but the city streets were too dangerous to travel on foot. There were too many of those mindless walkers out there. My new friend Otis had a plan. Otis had an 18-wheeler cab in the impound lot. He would get it and pick me up, and then we'd make for the theater. My job was to cover him from the roof. First, I needed a rifle with a scope, and I was in the right place to find one. Otis was ready to run to the truck. 
I didn't have many bullets in the sniper rifle, so I had to be careful. I couldn't let a single one of them get to him. Otis barely made it to his truck when a bunch of them attacked. I saw him wave and yell something. All I caught was theater. And then he drove away. I was alone again. Otis had abandoned me. I had to find another way to get to the theater. It wasn't too far, but the streets were crawling with the living dead. I decided to get there through the sewers. The theater was barricaded like a fortress, but everyone was dead. Those things got to them. I needed some rest. But first, I had some business to deal with. I woke up to honking. Otis came back for me. I asked Otis where we were going. A trucker on his CB radio told him about a city of the living, completely surrounded by water and walled off from those creatures. We had to find a way there. Our best bet was to go by boat. We headed for the docks. Freedom was in sight. Otis would go down and find a boat while I covered him. Otis found a 20-footer. He would hotwire it while I went to the control tower to open up the harbor gates. We barely got out of there alive. It was like they knew we were trying to get away. I was relieved, but Otis wasn't doing so good. I could tell they had got to him. He looked at me and took a deep breath and asked for one last favor. It made me sick to my stomach, but I had to do it before he turned into one of them. A living dead. It took a while, but I finally made it to the City of the Living. People from the city were trying to get supplies across the river, but the drawbridge wasn't working. They asked me for help, and I just couldn't say no. The truck was full of supplies, but that meant squat if we couldn't get into the city. The power to the bridge was out. If I could get the generator started, we might just stand a chance. The men at the gate took me to meet an important man named Mr. Kaufman. Mr. Kaufman was mighty impressed with how I helped out at the bridge. He was so impressed that he offered me a job on the spot. You see, there was this big, tall skyscraper called Fiddler's Green, filled with fancy rich people apartments. He wanted to fix it up again, but those flesh eaters had infested it. He said the cleanup was almost done. Only a few pockets of the things were left. It sounded dangerous but he'd give me a nice place to live and lots of money to do it. Besides, Mr. Kaufman said that by doing this, I'd be helping out a lot of people. Good people, just like me. <laughs> and that's how I got from the farm to the top of Fiddler's Green. Inside the city, life went on. Kaufman opened his fancy tower. Only the rich and famous were welcome, but that's a whole different story. At times, things seemed almost normal, but I knew, heck, we all knew, beyond the city walls was nothing but death, and it was trying to get in.